Hey everyone, Mike from Junkyard Turbos here, and this is the start of my rear mount turbo, remote mount turbo video series in which I will teach you how to build your own remote mount or rear mount turbo system for almost any car. Um, back when I was building rear mount turbos, there was a lot of debate on whether these actually worked or not. and I can tell you from personal experience that they do. They work well. There's uh, a couple of uh, details to take into consideration when building one, but other than that, it works just like any other turbo system. The largest difference, the biggest difference, is the oil return, um, and that you need to incorporate a um, an oil pump to to. Uh, scavenge the oil from the turbo back into the engine, but that's really um, the you know there are systems that'll actually take care of that for you, but you can do it yourself and uh, it works like a charm. I've never had a problem with it, and that's and the other significant difference is you know the distance from the uh, engine to the turbo, both feeding the turbo and feeding the engine. And surprisingly, when you size these correctly, there's not a lot of turbo lag. Um, it's just a matter of finding the right uh, turbine, compressor, and um, area ratio. And they work well. So, that being said, in this first video, I'm going to start off with a little bit of basic turbo science and some boring ass math um, on sizing your turbo for any application. Um, so it's a little boring, but if you're really into it, um, you're going to want to know how to size a turbo for any car. Uh, you can ask somebody, you know, Hey, I've got a, I've got a BMW 328, an older version, cause the new ones already have a turbo. I want to turbocharge this car. What size turbo? And someone uh, might already have the answer, but I'm going to take the time to really go through this with a fine tooth comb and tell you guys this is how you pick the size turbo and with considerations for a remote mount uh, I'm going to show you on the um, on the turbine side how to get rid of that turbo lag for remote mount so let's dig right into it how do you size your turbo well first you're going to need to know um, the CFM of your engine that's how much air your engine your engine is basically an air pump how much air is, you, is your engine pumping? So there's this little for, formula right here, as you can see. It says the volume of air in uh, CFM is equal to the engine RPM times the engine cubic inch di displacement divided by the magic number 3456. Now let's use an example of a, uh, a 350. I, I used to build, uh, you know, small blocks and... Um, so I'm just going to use a, a 350 as an example. You can use anything you want. Cubic inches. So um, my engine RPM, I'm going to assume, is 6,000. So I take 6,000 times 350 cubic inch divided by that magic number. And what you get is a CFM of 607. So um, in this example, we get 600 CFM at 6,000 RPM. And that's naturally aspirated before we turbocharge it. Okay, so now that we have our engine's requirement in cubic feet per minute, we need to convert it into um, pounds per minute in order to look at our compressor map because that's how compressor maps are laid out in uh, pounds per minute. So I'm going to use something called the ideal gas law. That's going to convert our cubic feet per minute into pounds per minute. So if we take a look at this uh, ideal gas law, it says P, V equals N, R, T. P is absolute pressure. V is the volume in CFM. N relates to mass. I'm going to give you that um, in the equation. And R is a constant as well. I'm going to give you that in the equation. And temperature is the air temperature in Rankine. Uh, we need to convert our air temperature, which is the charge temperature that's going into the engine. We need to convert that into rankings really easy. So let's take a look at our equation. P equals v, uh, PV equals nRT. And um, I've gone ahead and solved it for um, V in pounds per minute. 
all you need to plug in here is your PSI gauge. Um, right here, you see where it says PSIG. That would be 10 for us. And then our times our volume in CFM, which would be 600 for us. And then on the bottom, to get our temperature in degrees ranking, let's assume that we're around 130 degrees air um, charge temperature, which is normal for an intercooled engine, which is basically what we have here because of the length of the tube running back to the engine, runs under the car, air cools it down. So that's basically our intercooler. Let's just plug in 130 degrees there. So all you need to plug in is 10 PSIG, then you need to plug in 600 CFM, and on the bottom, 130, and then you add 460 to that to get to ranking. So basically, um, if you follow the equation here, we f solve it and we find that we are pumping out 67.888 pounds per minute on our 350 engine at 6,000 6, RPM and 130 degrees Fahrenheit charge temperature, which is very realistic. So we're looking at about 70 pounds per minute. And um, that's under, under uh, 10 PSI boost at 6,000 RPM. Um, now, our engine efficient that would be if our engine efficiency were 100%. But volumetric efficiency for most engines, they're getting better now. Let's just to say, assume 85%. So really, if we multiply our 67.9 CF uh, pounds per minute times 85.85 uh, or 85%, we get about 57.7 pounds per minute. Um, just understand that an engine is not 100% efficient. Volumetric efficiency is about 85%. Um, as a rule of thumb, you can figure out your airflow requirements. Um, uh, your horsepower is equal to airflow in pounds per minute times 10. So 57.7 pounds per minute because your engine and air pump 57.7 pounds per minute of air going through that engine is going to be about 577 horsepower. Um, so, now we have our uh, estimated horsepower, which is handy. We kind of got that as a byproduct. And we have something we can go to our compressor map with. We have 57.7 pounds per minute of airflow. Okay, I lied. There's one more thing we need to find out. Very simple. It's called the pressure ratio. Um, this is the ratio between the inlet and outlet pressures of the uh, turbo compressor, or the turbo's compressor. The inlet pressure is usually right around atmospheric 14.7 psi, a standard barometric pressure at sea level. The outlet pressure is your barometric pressure at sea level plus your boost pressure, so your absolute plus your gauge. And... Um, if you look at this handy dandy little formula, we see it's 14.7 plus your boost, which is your PSI gauge, divided by 14.7. So if we run 10 PSI gauge, we end up with a pressure ratio of 1.68. Now that we have a requirement in pounds per minute for our engine and our pressure ratio, we have all the information that we need to go to various compressor maps to um, find out which turbo we need to use. So here is an example of a compressor map for a, a turbo, a TL4E with 60 trim. Um, and as you can see, that red dot corresponds to our pressure ratio versus our um, pounds per minute airflow requirement. And you can see that our red dot is off the map. This turbo would not fit. Um, um, we ideally we want to be within somewhere within the inner islands those are called islands um, of this graph so for our particular engine that's a Garrett turbo by the way <clears throat> if we look at um, a T76 um, and we we plot against our on the bottom our 57.7 and then we go up to our pressure ratio of 1.68, I believe it was. We see that we fall right in between there. It looks pretty nice. It looks like this compressor 
This is not the turbine side. This is the compressor side that feeds the engine. Looks about right. So I'd say go ahead and use a, a T76 compressor um, with a maximum flow of 93 pounds per minute on our rear turbo engine. And that's a good start. I think that's enough to chew on today. Um, sizing our compressor for our turbo. So let's go back and review um, what we did really quickly because I know that was a lot to ingest. Um, and by the way, this will work on rear mounts. This will work on conventional. This is just standard sizing. Um, of course, you could email me and ask me which turbo to use for which engine, and I can tell you. But somewhere in the Bible or some ancient guy said that if you give a man a turbo size, he can turbocharge one engine. Teach a man to turbo size and he can turbocharge any engine. It was something like that. It was someone famous. I don't think it was Jesus, but someone in the Bible said it. Or it might have been something about fish. So let's go back and um, review how we sized our engine. We need to find the volume of air requirement in cubic feet per minute for our engine and then convert it to pounds per minute. And once we have pounds per minute, we need to find our pressure ratio, and then we can go right to our maps, our compressor maps, and find an ideal turbo compressor that will fit our application. We'll work on the turbine side later. You realize that in a turbo there's a compressor side, as you can see here, and a turbine side. Um, they, so um, the, the, the turbine side is fed from the engine exhaust, and it spools up. That's where you hear the term spooling. Um, and the compressor is what compresses the air and charges it back into the engine. So um, it's just like a supercharger. The compressor side is like a supercharger that would be belt driven. But rather than belt driven, it's driven through a turbine, which is uh, um, pushed by exhaust, your waste exhaust. Um, so just follow these formulas. Volume of air, cubic feet per minute, is equal to your engine RPM times your engine cubic inch displacement. You can convert your cc's. If you have a two liter engine, you can convert it. Uh, I'll, I'll put a conversion up here, down there, or up here, or over there somewhere where you can see that. And then um, divided by some magic number, three, four, five, six, that's gonna give you your volume of air, CFM, cubic feet per minute, which we need to convert two pounds per minute with the ideal gas law. So basically we take our we take our three numbers, our ten P, our ten PSI gauge, our six hundred CFM, and our temperature at the inlet of our engine, which is for um, I'm sorry, for intercooled engines, it's gonna be around 130 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, you, um, for non turbocharged about two hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit. Add 460 to that and you get your ranking. So as you see here, we plug in our 10, our 600, and our 130. The other numbers are just there. And we boil it down to about 67.888 pounds per minute. That's ideal. Engines aren't ideal. They're about 85% efficient. We boil that down with our 85% and we get... 57.7 pounds per minute. We have half the information we need to go to our map now. Now we need to find our pressure ratio. Our pressure ratio is 14.7, which is atmosphere. If you live in Colorado, it's going to be a lower number. But you can use 14.7 in these formulas. That's still going to work. Plus our boost, which is our PSI gauge, let's say 10, and divide that by 14.7. That's going to give us about 1.68 or 1.7. Then we can go to our map and follow across the bottom in pounds per, per minute, go up to our pressure ratio, and if that falls outside of our, our uh, map, it's a no good. If it falls inside, you want it to be near the center, it's a good, it's a good match for the compressor. Next, we'll go on to, uh, next video, I'll go on to uh, the turbine side, and we'll work from there, and then we'll start talking about... Um, specifics for rear mount turbos, like um, all of the parts you're going to need. Um, the oiling system is a very, very critical 
very critical, um, but not that hard to do. Um, they work fairly well. Um, and some other, basically turbocharging is plumbing. It's, it's all plumbing. Um, and it's, it, it might look daunting at first, but it's really not. You're just taking air and forcing it in different directions, taking vacuum um, reading, uh, vacuum readings. And it's just basically plumbing. Um, and um, as I stated before, these rear mount turbos do work. I built several and I was very impressed with the performance. Um, proper turbine sizing will reduce turbo lag um, and you'll get some great performance out of these. And the good thing is they're easy to install and they're easy to convert your car back. Um, you're not changing headers, you're just taking, you can leave your cats on, you're just taking um, the exhaust pipe, routing it into the turbine side of the of the turbocharger, routing a pipe back up to the to the intake to your mass flow, your mass air sensor. Um, so anyway, that's it for this video. Just take this and kind of ingest it, and I will be putting a video up every week or sooner in this remote rear mount turbocharging uh, series. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm Mike at JunkyardTurbos.com. That's where you can email me as well. Or you can visit JunkyardTurbos.com. We're getting our site back up. Um, it's been up since 2002. We had a problem in 2011 where we got hacked and destroyed. Um, but we're getting everything back up and online again, finally, after several years. Um, I've been on side projects and uh, decided to get back into boosting engines, which I've been doing since mid-90s. Um, so I have quite a bit of experience. I've also, you may have seen, I've got many, many ebooks around out there, which I'll put back on junkyardturbos.com on turbocharging EFI engines, you know, electronic fuel injected rear mount turbos. Um, and the like. So, all right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I know I talk a lot, but I'll hopefully next video we'll get right into nuts and bolts for remote mount, rear mount turbos, and uh, you can start on your project. Uh, go to junkyardturbos.com and take a glance at some of the stuff we have going on. Hey, thank you, and uh, I'm out. Bye.